Hi, welcome back to Learn uh, Piezo.org. And today we're going to speak about something a little bit different. Uh, we've been going through a lot of analytical derivations and haven't really been giving you a sense of how piezoelectric materials will behave in real applications in reality. So we're going get, to get to some numbers now. And I'm going to aptly call this lesson Numbers. So let's take the common case where we apply an electric field over a piezoelectric material, which obviously by now we know it looks like a block, uh, but it doesn't have to. I think you may have guessed that. Um, but let's assume this piezoelectric material has a polarization looking like that. And we are having some type of electric field across it, positive, negative, which makes the electric field go in the same direction as the spontaneous polarization which we know increases the size of the material and we see some delta L, the strain is going to be a positive number. We know the strain is calculated by this equation, electric field, times the length, or this is a thickness, you know. So let's say we apply 5 volts and let's say the thickness is 5 millimeters. So basically, uh, oops, sorry, this should be a D. Uh, the electric field is 1 volt per millimeter. So now how do we calculate the strain and thereby the displacement, which is the real thing we want to look for. So let's convert this equation a little bit. So we know that strain is equal to the change in length over the length of interest, of course, and it's equal to the voltage, the electric field's voltage over the length here or the thickness, whatever you're going to uh, call it. Uh, these may be different at times, and we'll see that actually near the end of the lecture, or perhaps the next one, because this might take a little while. So now we're going to worry about this piezoelectric D constant, this charge constant. And you may be wondering, first of all, what units does it have to have? Well, we know that electric field has units of uh, volts per meter in general. So, I mean, because strain is non-dimensional, this has to have units of meters per volt. There's also other types of uh, ways to compensate for it, but uh, meters per volt is a thing. And really, this piezoelectric D constant, uh, it's kind of interesting how small exactly this <laughs> number is. So get ready for it. Around a really good material, I would say, would have around 500, what? To the minus 12 meters per volt. Or, so this is an extremely small number. <laughs> So let's uh, continue this. So we can cross out these L's. So the change in the length is equal to how many volts here? We put 5 volts over it. Uh, and multiplied by 500. And these are all in, uh, you know, these are all in SI units. So no, no, no worries there. We're going to end up with meters. E to the minus 12. So basically this one was 2,500. Uh, pico meters or we can say 2.5 nanometers this is the amount this material will change and you can imagine I think a human hair uh, is a hundred micrometers a human hair and what's a hundred micrometers it's 100,000 nanometers <laughs> So as you can see, this is not very much. Uh, you apply 5 volts over this little piece of material, and you're not going to get any dismissal. What the heck are you going to do with that? And uh, the answer is nothing. You need to change something. You need to get this material to get big. You need to get this material to change its size. So there's, other, there's some ways that we can use to increase this small displacement. So we ha the problem is we have a very small displacement. So uh, here, you know, displacement. We realize that piezoelectric materials are smart materials, but they're not magic materials. You can't just t use them to take over the world. You know, there's all these people proposing it. You know, we propose many applications for piezoelectric materials, but uh, there's there's always just like with other limitations, other materials and other methods and everything else, there are limitations to piezoelectric materials, and they're not uh, magical in any ways. <laughs> 
Well, in some ways, they're kind of magical, but they're not. So let's take a look again at this equation. And this is the, you know, the basic equation which we're used to uh, calculate displacement, which, we're, you know, you need displacement for uh, actuators. You know, if you want to move something with the piezoelectric material, you know, precise movement, or you want to make a motor, or you want to uh, create some sound waves in other material, you need this kind of displacement parameter here. This is this becomes very relevant and important. Uh, so therefore, we need this equation here. Or if you want to use this equation, where we have the strain is equal to the electric field times the piezoelectric charge constant. So we'll, we're going to actually play with these two numbers here. And remember that this is volts per meter, volts per length, or and this is a change in length over length. So there are two ways to get more strain. So how to get more strain? That's the question. Or rather, more displacement. And the first way you can get more displacement is simply just make the material longer. So one, make the material longer. <laughs> and we're going to see how crazy this is going to be. Uh, there's no length over here. So if you make the material longer, you will, and, but if you keep the electric field the same, then you'll get a longer, longer size. But this actually doesn't work. You can't make the material longer. The strain is going to change. Because look, because uh, as, you, as, you, as we saw above earlier, the length actually cancels out. So really, in the end, it depends upon the voltage applied. So we can't just make the material longer and to get a longer displacement. Because when we make the material longer, it has the opposite effect of making the electric field less. And the electric field is what determines strain, so our initial kind of approach does not work. So how do we get more strain? So we got to play with this idea of thickness. And now I will take the time and introduce a concept called multilayer. So I want you to consider two examples here. We have two materials, piezoelectric materials, of course, and they are exactly the same height. Let's say we call them 20 millimeters. They're both exactly 20 millimeters. But um, I tell you that one of these one of these materials is a bunch of little piezoelectric materials glued together. And this is just one piezoelectric material. So as we know, we have this some type of polarization. We have uh, you know applied applied electric field. Let's call this positive negative. We develop an electric field like this, and we get a delta L like that. And it, it gets bigger. So uh, let's compare the two cases. And in this case, we have, you know, again, we have a positive and negative power supply, uh, you know, and we put electrodes. So now we have uh, electrodes. All. Oops. So we have electrodes on top and bottom as well. So we put a positive here. Then we hook this up positive as well. And we hook this positive as well. And then another color, obviously. We have this hooked up there, and this hooked up there. So basically, we get an electric field like this. All the reds are positive, right? It's kind of convention. So we have an electric field like this. Electric field like going up there, electric field going up, down, up, down, like that. And if before we attach these materials together, we make sure the polarization is correct. So let's make sure the polarization is you know, like this too. And now we're going to compare these two cases. The D constant of these materials are the same. But basically, by making this multi-layer, we're, we're basically uh, changing the effective thickness. So let's take a look. And let's call this case A, and let's call this case B. Let's go with case A now. So the strain in case A equals the, the same thing, the electric field times the D constant. So what is the electric field here? This is 20 millimeters. Let's just call this one volt. Uh, just, you know, calculations go a lot easier. Well, actually, let's call it 100 volts. Uh, that's a lot easier, actually. 100 volts. We're applying 100 volts to each uh, material. So 100 volts over 5 millimeters. If you remember uh, this case, 
Okay, it was five millimeters for each. So we have uh, the electric field of 100. Or let's, let's just call it, yeah. So we have 100 volts over five millimeters. And we have the same D constant. I'll just leave it that, like that. And then we have our strain, which occurs in the end. So this ends up being 20 volts per millimeter times D equals XA. Now if you examine XB, in which we're going to get, you know, we have the electric field, we have D, but this electric field is going to be 100 volts per 20 millimeters. So we end up with 5 volts per millimeter. Now we see very something very interesting. The electric field here is five times larger in case A than in case B. And we go to calculate the strain or the displacement, we have this, this same equation over L. Delta L over L. Now each of these materials over here, it has a voltage of, of, of 100 volts. So basically, what we could do sort of so if we go over to this equation, each of these, so we have 4 delta L. We have delta L of each one is, of each little block is this V times D. But the delta L, because the voltage is the same of this one, is, is, is also delta L times V times the previous D constant. But except here we have a four times this factor because we have four little blocks we have this 100 volts being applied four times to four different areas therefore we get an addition type of uh, uh, mentality uh, not mentality we get an addition type of effect because of the increased effective electric field so if we end up you know doing all of this uh, these equations will notice that these uh, change in length in case a is four times the change in length in case B. And, and all the only thing we did differently is we stack these materials together. So this is one way of changing, you know, one way of, of effectively changing the material property. Not much, but and getting more strain because you know we gotta do everything we can to get more strain. You know, this is kind of like 2.5 nanometers. Uh, a thickness of a hair is 100,000 nanometers. Hopefully I got the math right, but you know this is this is a difference. You know here is significant, and yeah, de definitely we need to do something to change all of this nonsense. Of this such a small displacement, so this is one way. Basically, instead of doing a hundred four layers, people are gonna put in like a hundred layers. You know we can make we can make thickness is hundred micrometers thick, which is a uh, hundred micrometers is one point one millimeters. And we can make it even smaller. We can make it 10 micrometer layers. Imagine how many 10 micrometer layers you can fit in this 20 millimeter besides. So we can use a relatively lower voltage to get more strain. We'll continue uh, this same, these same ideas uh, in the next video. Thanks for watching.